I'm Lawrence Hutter, partner in uh, Deloitte, uh, focusing on the food and beverage industry. And I'm Mark Hill, partner in consumer business, focusing on the production end of the food chain in agribusiness and food processing. We're here to introduce the third in our series of food and beverage industry reports. Developing the Food and Beverage 2020 report involved interviews with more than 50 leaders of major UK and international food and beverage businesses in retail, in manufacturing and in uh, food service. Clearly, economic turmoil has continued, uh, there are challenges in the market, there is a continuing growth outside of the developed markets of the UK and Europe, particularly in, in the Far East. So the latest report really focuses on what's you know, the key opportunities and challenges there are for the industry against that background. There are three key themes that we highlight in the report. The first is the increasing demand on finite food and agricultural resources, principally driven by the growing middle class in major developing economies. The second is the opportunities created by some of that growth, and those opportunities exist both in export markets, but also it creates opportunity in domestic markets. And then thirdly, the opportunity and the need to run businesses more effectively and efficiently through improved production techniques, through new sourcing approaches, and through the tailoring of product to changing consumer needs and behaviours. I'm just going to talk about the first of our major themes, which is increasing global demand against scarce resources. The increase in the global population, coupled with finite resources and the competition for agricultural feedstocks from biofuels, is well trailed. Here in the UK, our self-sufficiency has dropped from 78% in 1984 down to just 52% today. We all know that food consumption and food demand in the next 20 years is predicted to rise by 50%. Perhaps what we recognise less is the fact that water usage is going to also increase by 30% by 2030. So we have to get much, much better at using our water. And it might be blindingly obvious, but no water no food. So where are the opportunities for UK producers? First, with rising demand from Asia, then I think there are great export-led opportunities. Secondly, as government seeks to close our trade gap and support UK production, I think there is a greater opportunity to sell into our local marketplace. What's interesting to me is that it's not the population growth per se, but the population growth within the middle class. That's grown by 700 million to 1.8 billion in the last 30 years, and just in the next 20 years, it's predicted to grow by 3 billion to just shy of 5 billion. That's a massive opportunity for Western producers. With greater affluence means that there is a more demand for quality products, and that's what the UK is great at. In this world characterised by increasing demand and hence scarcity of supply, we will also see sourcing strategies change We'll see you know, both retailers and food manufacturers, for example, wanting to lock in long-term their most strategic ingredients that they depend upon. And we'll see you know, businesses that traditionally have been somewhat remote from agriculture getting much more involved again in primary agriculture. And that will, that will offer a number of things. It will bring some of that security of supply. It will bring some of that stability of price. But it will also support the substantiation of claims to the consumer about provenance, quality, animal welfare and many of those things that are important to our consumers when choosing the food they buy to eat. One of the reasons why it's going to be so important for retailers and food manufacturers to understand their consumers and shoppers is that we are likely to see something of a bifurcation in the market. You know, we'll see the majority of consumers, for example, being very price sensitive and being very attracted by the promotions in store that are available. Um, but nevertheless, we'll see a, you know, a piece of the population, the more affluent consumer, who is less price sensitive and very much uh, uh, looking for premium products to uh, in, in, indulge their tastes. And the ability of manufacturers and retailers to play to both of those markets, to the less well-off and to the more affluent consumer, is going to be important. And that's true both in the UK domestic market. It's also very true in the emerging developing markets such as China, India, Brazil, where what we're seeing is the emergence of a significant affluent upper middle class. The business environment will also be characterised by increasing complexity of regulation if it wasn't already complex enough and that's regulation around labelling, ingredients, you know, environmental footprint, um, you know, 
other accreditations that the consumer might want to see. In increasingly, you know, things like Fair Trade, Marine Stewardship Council, you know, other labels become very important to inform the, uh, the purchase process. We've seen increasing focus amongst the UK's leading retailers on their private label offering, and it's grown as a part of their overall mix. That creates both challenge and it creates opportunity. It certainly creates challenge for second and third tier brands, and we expect to see continuing rationalization of, of brand portfolio. But actually, it creates real opportunity for the stronger brands, and we'll see some brand extension, continuing brand extension, uh, to fill some of that space that's made. As food businesses start to tackle new markets, understand new consumer groups, understand how to export, how to understand how to price, and make, and make the right margin in different markets, then they are going to need to look seriously at the talent agenda within their businesses. And at the same time, technology, not many of the small and medium-sized businesses that were involved in the survey had any plans to invest significantly in upgrading the technology they use to support their businesses and to better understand and communicate with their, their customers and indeed their consumers. One of the things we would highlight as a, a bit of a rallying cry from this survey is the need for businesses to address both of those, to really focus on making sure they've got the talent in their businesses to seize these opportunities and the technology to understand markets, to understand con consumers and to target their products and their offerings appropriately. I'd agree with that and I think the, you know, the big area and the big battleground in the next 10 years is going to be around the consolidation piece. So that middle ground where retailers are pushing down to get vertical integration into the processing and also producers are pushing up into that middle territory. That's around scale in order to seize these export opportunities. It's also around margin improvement, but most importantly, just picking up on your point, Lawrence, it's around actually t talent capture as well, because those people are in those middle businesses and they can leverage off that to, to exploit those new markets. So in spite of the economic challenge that we continuously hear about in the news, for example. Actually, the story here is positive, and it's quite noticeable that although even only one in ten of small and medium-sized food businesses today in the UK export at all, over 50% of the CEOs of those businesses said they see export opportunities in the future. We see export markets such as those of Asia developing very fast, but let's not forget those of Europe also. You know, I, you know, the rest of the EU presents a very interesting opportunity for UK food producers and indeed manufacturers and retailers. Um, and let's make sure we don't forget that there's a really significant opportunity here in our domestic market because our food is going to become more expensive. Actually, the ability of our farmers, our food manufacturers, to make a decent living out of food is going to be enhanced by the changes in the economy. And we see that as very encouraging, great opportunity, and actually something that the government will, we believe, actively support because it will reduce our trade gap and it will reduce our dependence on imported foods. If you look at our UK exports as a whole, 77% are directed towards the EU. If you look at where the growth is in terms of the BRIC countries, our total exports to the BRIC countries are less than our exports to Belgium at the moment. That has to change and that's a massive opportunity for UK producers.